Uh, Dr. Katula is our sp first speaker. Uh, he's Professor of Rheumatology and Internal Medicine. He's the ULAR President-Elect. He's Director of the Research Laboratories and Academic Unit of Clinical Rheumatology and Director of the Postgraduate Academic School of Rheumatology at the University of Genoa in Italy. Um, he's got a very long CV, as most of our speakers do, and so I'll just mention a few things. He's been a member of the Scientific Board of the Italian Foundation for Arthritis Research. He's been a member of the Autoimmune Related Diseases Association and the board. He's been a past chairman, past present executive committee mem mem uh, member, and a founder of the study group on neuroendocrine immunology of the ACR. He's been the uh, founder and chairman of the study group on neuroendocrine immunology of the rheumatic diseases of ULAR, and he's organizer and chair of the first four international conferences on neuroendocrine immunology, uh, basis of the rheumatic diseases, and the first three ULAR capillaroscopy courses, which he's going to talk about in his next lecture. And he's going to speak this morning on estrogen metabolism and autoimmunity. Maurizio. Good morning. This is the first lecture of the breakfast, so we will start with an unusual, in some way, topic, estrogens and autoimmunity. And I think this is a topic that uh, is the case to discuss because in the last 20 years, I've been involved in basic and clinical studies concerning the role of gonadal hormone in autoimmunity and not only in autoimmunity. But first, let me thank David for the invitation. I'm very proud to be here. This is a so important conference, so it's a honor for me to present some data and to join to all of you. Uh, estrogen metabolism and autoimmunity. This is a very, very fascinating topic because it's a part of a very complex system in our body that is the neuroendocrine immune system. The players of the immune neuroendocrine system are, of course, is of course the central nervous system. That is the area where we control all our activities, together with the peripheral nervous system. That is a sort of links with the periphery by releasing neurotransmitters and controlling several activities, even for feedback to the central nervous system. But in the middle, has important effector of the central nervous system is the endocrine system. And the endocrine system is constituted by several, of course, endocrine organs. And the most important are the adrenal gland. We will discuss about the adrenal gland and shortly, and the gonads. The gonads are really important because the product of gonads, as well as the product of adrenal gland, glucocorticoids, and testosterone and the 70 beta estradiol are steroid hormone synthesized from the cholesterol. And so have a common structure, share common receptors, and you will see why estrogens and androgens may exert immunomodulatory activity, just because there is a close and strict relationship with glucocorticoids in periphery. And finally, the immune system the immune system is so important for our health. And the immune system, when exaggerated, become causes of autoimmunity, so self-aggression. And the normal balance between all the three major components, central nervous system, endocrine system, and immune system, is what we consider health conditions. This is an important point because from one side you have the axis between the central nervous system and endocrine. On the other side you have the immune system that is in balance during the day. You will see following important circadian rhythms. So during the day there is a continuum input from the neuroendocrine to immune system, especially during the night. And so we keep balance between the two systems. But when there is a prevalence, overactivation, for several reasons, 